if you were in the earlier services, everybody thought it was a blast. You know, I got a, I got a message from the U.S. Someone said, Pastor, that was smoking hot. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles quickly to Joel chapter 2, verse 28. Joel chapter 2, in verse 28. The Bible says, And it came to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. This is what the Holy Spirit will do when it comes upon us. He says, Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see vision. What the Bible is saying here is very important and critical. He says, when the Holy Spirit comes on people, he would begin to give them vision. People have asked me this question several times. And what is the question? How does God grow us? How does God expand me? How does God move me from a level 2 to a level 7? How does God change me from a level 100 to a level 1000? One of the things you must know is this. One critical thing that God uses to grow and expand us is vision. One critical thing that God uses to grow and expand us is vision. Let me explain in a very simple way. Have you noticed that there are some times in your life, and I don't even know if you have noticed this spiritual operation, you would be, you would, you know, you would just be okay running the business, you're making maybe 50 million per annum, then you just be like, what is this nonsense? How can I be making 50 million, 50 million per annum? I sh I'm way more than this. And all of a sudden, there will be this huge dissatisfaction that will compel you to go for more. Who knows what I'm talking about? Or maybe you live in a rented apartment, you've lived there all your life. Now you just get there, like, and maybe the landlord just increased the rent. Normally, when the landlord increased the rent, you're compliant. You will either go and have a conversation with the agent and have a negotiation, you know, negotiate a rate, or you would just pay. But this time around, when the rent was increased, the increase was marginal, but for some reason, you were just upset. And you were like, I, I, you know what, I'm going to stop. This is my last rent. I'm going to move it to my house. What happens in the process is this, that the Spirit of God sows a seed of vision in your heart. And all of a sudden, when you're in that process, you have just begin to say, I can't take it again. This is, this is what happens. So in that season, God puts a vision in your heart. That's what happens. In that season, God puts a vision in your heart. You know, why is it important? Because those things were normal things you have aligned with before. But now because there's a vision in your heart, there's a different way in which you think and process those things. There's a different way in which you think and process those things. Let me give you a good example. And the reason I'm explaining this is this. If you don't understand how this frustration works, it can lead into depression. So, when you come into a place and you feel as if, why am I doing 50 million? Because really, I should be doing 100 million. That's what your desire is. If you don't know how to manage your heart, you can sink into depression. But if you understand what's going on, what's going on is that God has opened up your heart to believe for more. Instead of you sinking into depression, what you should do is like a pregnant woman that is about to deliver. You will learn the contractions of the Spirit and learn how to push so that you can birth what the Spirit of God is doing within you. Are you here, somebody? Are you here, somebody? Okay. So, how does God change our level? He changes our level by putting vision within our spirit. Judges chapter 6. Let's look at a practical example. Judges chapter 6. Verse 11. The Bible says this. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak which was in Ophrah that pertained unto Johash the Abrezite. His son Gideon threshed out with by the winepress. To hide it for the Midianites. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him, to Gideon. And the angel of the Lord said this. The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then is all this befalling us? Where be all the miracles which our fathers told us of? 
did not God bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and delivered us into the hands of the Midianites. Josh, I'm sorry, Gideon was busy complaining. Verse 14 is very instructive. And the Lord looked upon him and said unto him, Go in this thy might and save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent you? What happened was this. Gideon was complaining about the economic state of his country. Either it was Nigeria or Kenya or Canada. And the Spirit of God spoke to Gideon and said, Don't complain. You are the one I've chosen to fix it. Gideon was standing by himself and the Spirit of God dropped a dream inside the heart of Gideon that says the salvation of this whole nation that depends on you. There are many of you here. What you are grumbling about is the indication of what you are called to save. You are grumbling about the banking sector and the high interest rate they give a loan. And God is saying to you, the reason why you are grumbling is because I'm going to bless you so much that you will begin to give a single digit loan to enable and empower entrepreneurs. What I'm saying is this. Sometimes what you complain about is the indication of what you are called to do. Sometimes what you complain about is the indication of what you are called to do. Sometimes what you complain about is the indication of what you're called to do. You have gone through a lot of business as a woman and you've seen how several women are harassed just in a bit to get ahead in business by men that have power and means. And you begin to tell yourself, as long as I'm alive, I'm going to set up a structure that will support women and save them away from harassment. And it's something. The reason I'm saying so, Gideon was here, was complaining. He said, this is not going so well. That's not going so well. And all of a sudden, the voice of the Lord came to Gideon. And what did the voice of the Lord say to him? It was very simple. It was very instructive. He says, you go in this thy might and save Israel from the hand of the magician. What God did was to put vision in the heart of what? Of Gideon. He put a vision of delivering who? Delivering Israel out of the hands of the Midianites. Many of you don't understand this. When God wants to change your life, he will put a vision there. You will walk into a bank and there will come out in your spirit a vision of a digital bank. And you don't know what's going on. Because as you're going to go in the bank, you have to feel this form, feel that form. Like, what is going on here? And in your mind, it just pops up. A digital bank. You were trying to transfer money and it just pops up. A fintech that can produce. You were, and a vision pops up like that. You were watching TV and you missed the program. And God says, why can't you do a mobile television app? And those vision pops up in your mind. But the thing is that when vision pops up in the hearts of people, most people are not even aware that vision has popped up. The Bible says that as Gideon was here, the angel of God said to him, go forth in this your might. So there are visions. There are visions. Sometimes you walk into you want to buy a house and you see how houses are poorly built. And inside you, you just receive a, a, a vision to become the number one building company that builds quality houses that fantastic prices. You, your child is sick and you go to the hospital and you have to go to this place to do a test and that place to do a test. And the vision is built into your heart of a first class medical center that has corresponding medical laboratory. Those are visions that are built in your heart. The other day I was reading about the story of this man, Tony Anumelo. And so they only worked as a clerk, a bank clerk, what we call teller. And while he was there, that was where the vision of him owning the bank came from. Listen to me. The vision of your future is in your presence. I'm telling you, the vision. How do I know that? Genesis chapter 1. The Bible says every seed carries seed in itself. Every seed carries it. So where you are currently is a seed for the future. The vision of the future is in your presence. Let's keep reading. So how does God expand us? God expands us by putting vision in our heart. Let's look at the next thing. The Bible says this. Oh, glory to God. When he says, have I not sent him? Verse 14, verse 15 says, And Gideon said, O oh Lord my God, where which shall I save Israel? God says, start a bank. You are saying, God, do you know me? My father is not a billionaire. 
We don't belong to the ruling party. What do we know? He says, where will shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh. Not just poor, I am the least in my father's house. God tells you to start a TV company. And you're saying that, Lord, do you know me? God tells you to start an app. God challenges you to start a blockchain in cryptocurrency. God is challenging you about the medical sector. God is asking you to step into a place as a governor. God is putting dreams as a local government chairman in your heart. God is putting dreams to be the most successful female entrepreneur in market in Africa. And you're saying, God, do you know me at all? Listen to me. God knows you. You're the one that doesn't know yourself. Because when God made you, he knew what he put inside you. Anything that God has called you to do is because there's deposit of grace and raw material on the inside. He's calling it to come out. You are the one that does not know yourself. Follow what God is saying, sir. He said, he said, Lord, do you know me? I am, God says, I know you. I know you more than you know yourself. I understand you more than you understand yourself. Glory to God. He says, I know you. I know you more than you know yourself. I understand you more than you understand yourself. And the reason I'm saying this is this. Everything that God has, because if you have a true vision, it will intimidate you. Every vision you have, it's going to really intimidate you. And some of you are here, you're saying that, how can I do this? How can I do that? Start the logistic company. How much do I have? You keep looking, and God says, I've caught. Listen to me. When God gives you the vision, you need to believe that the vision comes from vision. As a matter of fact, the word vision and provision are the same, only for the word pro. You didn't notice it? So take the word vision, then put pro before, then you have provision. But what does pro mean? Pro is just a simple word I say before vision. Meaning that before vision, there's provision. Are you here, somebody? Yes, sir. So you are running this stuff from your back of your car. And you drove past VI. And God you just looked at a mall. And God says, put your store there. You say, eh? Put my store there. And God has given me a vision. Do you know what I'm saying so to you? Because if you cannot capture the moment of vision, you will lose it. Yeah. Glory to God. So see what the Bible says. <laughs> this is very powerful. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It says, I'm the police in my father's house, verse 15. Verse 16 now says, And the Lord said to him, Surely I will be with thee, oh my goodness. And this is the biggest part I love. And you will smite the Egypt, the Midianite. Like what? One man. Uh, like what? One man. It says you will smite the Midianite like one man. Most of you don't know what that means. Mm. What that means is this. What an army should do, you will do it. A poker bar shutter. He says, it normally would take an army to smite the Midianites. He said, but the demonstration of grace and power in your life will be such that what 1,000 soldiers could do, that's what you will lift up your hand and do. What does that mean literally? When they are raising money, when 300 people come and say, want to raise capital, by the time you get there, you will wipe them out. What does wipe them out mean? By the time they drop out their money, they came together and they raised 600 million. You just say, ah, 300 of you, 600 million. That's it. Ladies and gentlemen, this is 750 million. It says, as one man, and this is the way I want to start thinking. Not collective victory. Collective victory is wonderful. But what collective victory would do is where you start from. As one man. As one man. Listen, eh? When God puts vision in your heart, there's a way He expands you. Ah! Where's my balloon? What does vision do? Vision, God uses vision to expand us. Look at, look at, just hold on, sir. Look at the story of Peter, the fisherman, Peter and Go. They were just fishermen. They were just to be what? Fishing. Look, okay, I say, come. Let me change your life. What did he say? He said, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. What does that mean? Before this time, you fish and collect intangibles and insignificance. Let me change your life. Collect things that are what's significant. Become fishers of men. He put Peter had never heard that in his life before. That I can stop fishing fish and start fishing men. Ah! It was vision, sir. Peter said, 
Peter said, what will I go again? He said, I'll follow you. Because God uses vision to expand people. Someone says, I want to grow. God uses vision to expand people. Listen to me. A lot of people, just, just give me a minute. The, the people in the slides, I wanted to stay more on, on the video feed. You know, thank you. God uses video to expand people. And I'm saying so because of a very powerful reason. This is the reason I'm saying so. This is very powerful. A lot of people keep saying, I'm not growing. You cannot grow without vision. You know why? What challenges you to grow is your vision. As a matter of fact, you grow to the level of your vision. So when you stop growing, it's either you've lost your vision or you've attained your vision. So when you see someone that's not grown in one year, when you see someone that's not grown financially, when you see someone not grown, the reason why is that either they have lost their vision or they have attained their vision. The reason why is that vision expands you. This is what vision does. Bring it, sir. This is what vision does. There are two balloons here. A blown one and just one that is not blown. Everybody is a balloon. When God wants to make you blow, he blows into you. This is vision. God begins to blow you. Is this the highest balloon you can go? It's not. It can go further than this. But it's the amount of vision that determines the expansion. Many people are not expanding because they are not allowing vision in their hearts. This balloon can be potential this, but it's not grown because it has not allowed any vision to go for him. Your life has not expanded because you have not allowed vision to go into it. Are you here, somebody? Some of you, what God, you know, just some days ago, I saw them posting um, profit after tax or before tax of some banks. And as they were posting the profit before tax, I noticed that new banks like Zene Bank, um, Access Bank were topping old banks. And I said, my God, what is going on here? And it just confirmed what I knew. Let me tell you something. No matter what is doing well today, the people that will do better in the future are here. The reason why is that the past cannot intimidate the future. When MK was alive, the way it was rich, we thought we would never see something like that before. What them damn what they are doing right now, they've turned MK was born into change. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. The reason why is that the best of God is in the future, not in the past. When, 20 years ago, did you know any bank called Zenit? Did you know any bank called them, um, what do they call it, Providos? The banks, anyone that was going to corporate bank, Savannah Bank, ACB, Africa Bank. What I'm saying is that those banks, as new people came, they have to give way to the old. What I'm saying to you that I know you feel they are giants today, but they are men carrying vision that will swallow them up. Are you hearing me? When Archbishop Benson, the host, I was alive. When that guy, when Archbishop did ministry, we thought that was it. That, ah, 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 Archbishop. With what the current fathers are doing, they have finished what Archbishop built university almost for 10 or 15 years. They have been investing that time in one year. Why? The best of God. The reason I'm saying so that we need to appreciate what men have done, but the best of God is in his future. Vision. How does God expand you? By putting vision in your heart. How does God expand you? By putting vision in your heart. How does God... Because what vision does is this. Vision will move you out of comfort into discomfort. That's why people don't like vision. Because vision will challenge you out of your comfort zone. That's why people don't like vision. Because vision challenges people to step out of their comfort zone. Look at Isaac. His father, Abraham, went to, um, what do they call it? Egypt. When there was, what do they call it? When there was famine. As soon as there was famine, he was going to go there. God said, don't go there, stay here. God gave him a new vision. The challenge with people is that it's not as if the future is not bright, but they cannot see it. 
The power of vision. The power of vision. They say Shelly is folding up. They need to, fold. they say Shelly is living in Nigeria. They need to leave so that some people can buy it. That's how it works. When you were young, what was the filling station when you were growing up? AP. Which one again? Huh? Elf. Shell. Texaco. Where are they to? Where, was, did you ever end on Enyo? But certain people are rising up. They are not intimidated by those on the stream. They are saying we are going for it. Why? We are able to take the Lancer. We are able to take the land. It's time to take the consultant. It's time to take the fashion industry. It's time to take the media. It's time to take governance. It's time to take politics. But the question is this. Let me even help you. 20 years ago, did you have a church called Harvesters? They were, they were not. They were, did, did, did you ever buy anything called Next Level Prayer? No! Why? The way life is, it is it's a stage. As some people are living, some people are coming on it. The people that are coming on it are those that have visions. Sir. The power. I said, how does God expand you by putting vision? Gideon never thought in his life that he would be the one to save Israel. But God put the thought in his heart. Question, what is the vision God is putting in your heart that you're ignoring? What is the vision that God is putting in your heart that you're ignoring? Oh, wow. People don't stop growing. They've lost their vision. Glory to God. I say 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 glory to God. Let me have the picture of um, Pastor Handsome up. Just about three or four months ago, we are praying and God said, let's go to Abuja. And before that time, this couple that their picture is up, they had spoken to me about how they want to move abroad, do some mass and live abroad. And all of a sudden, God says, let's go. And I told him, you know, and God put his name in my heart. I said, do you want to do this? And he said, and he said, let me get back to you tomorrow. And I said, sir, the Lord has spoken to. I'm gone. No, I'm considered I'm gone. And off they move. I said, what will your wife do in Abuja? I said, when we get there, we'll sort it out. We had no church, no cell there. In one month, people that reached out to join the church, almost 1,000. You are clapping now because someone has vision, sir. But how many of you can step out of your comfort zone and step into discomfort? Because that's what vision does. Vision moves you from comfort into discomfort. Nobody grows in comfort zones. Nobody grows in comfort zones. Oh, I want to be the top musician. You don't become the top musician that way. It takes effort. It takes labor. It takes work. You want to grow, get ready for discomfort. Vision. God uses vision to expand us. Instead of you buying expensive bags, you are saving to open a new, to open a new store in, v, in VI. Everybody thinks you are stupid. They say, Why don't you have the latest hair? Because there's a new store I'm looking at. All your friends are buying cars. You are buying investment. Because vision creates discomfort. God uses vision to expand us. That's what I'm going to do. He says, in the last days, I will pour my spirit upon your sons and daughters. And they will see vision. God uses vision to expand us like that balloon. Oh. Will you leave a cell? Ah, no, 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 I can't talk. Don't you realize that God is using the vision of cell leadership to expand you? And many keep running. You keep running. You keep running. If you run from vision, you are running from growth. If you run from growth, you are running from increase. If you run from increase, you are running from a significant life. 
God uses vision to expand us. 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 us. Yeah. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. What does God do again? God uses vision to make life meaningful. Someone, I've heard people say that. Oh, my life is not, you know, my life, you know, my life, I'm bored. I've heard people say, I'm bored. I feel suicidal. You know, when people say things like that, one thing I know is that they don't have vision. And if they have vision, it's not active. Because how can your life be boring? When you have vision. How can your life be unfulfilling when you have vision? Can I have my cups, please? Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just bring, just bring. It's okay. Oh, my God. When Atlas are running, this is what they're running for, cup. They have a vision. This is what they're looking for. There's a vision. There's a vision. That's why they're running. There's a vision. That's why they're training. There's a vision. Listen to me. Life is boring because there's no goal. Life is boring because there's no vision. Every atlas you see in the morning, you will see him gymming and gymming and gymming. You say, is he crazy? Because there's something in mind. There's something in mind. There's something. What do you have in mind? Someone say, and what do you go to? I go to anyone I want to. You don't have vision. If you have vision, you go to where aligns with your visions are. Because someone must win this cup. Who is the person? Someone must take this medal. Who is the person? Someone must win this cup. In life, people always win cups. Someone must win cups. Nobody has one cup in your family is the reason why you must win one. In consulting, someone must win a cup. In entertainment, thank God. See, some, some of them are not even born again. Look at someone like Moabudu. Look at how in the entertainment she has set the pace practically. As not a man, as a woman, she sought the cup and went for it. Are you here? What cup? You, life is only not something. My life is not, I'm not happy. I don't feel fulfilled. I don't feel motivated. You don't feel motivated because there's nothing you're seeing. Yeah. If you see something, you will walk towards it. You need something that wakes you up every day. You need, ah, someone say, what's a dream? A dream is what you see. You can't sleep. Yeah. Glory to God. I said glory to God. I said glory to God. When you see it, you can't sleep. See, the way some of you waste away time, some of you, you know, say that all I just want is vacation. All I, I'm like, what kind of life is this? Like, what kind of life is this? I believe in vacation. But you can't be going to vacation every month. You just came from vacation. I want to go back again. Every month vacation. What do you live for? Do you live for beach? But the reason why you are that way is that nothing brings you fulfillment because there's nothing you're living for. When you do good work, you know good work, good work, good work, you, you feel, vacation gives you a feeling of refreshment. When you finish your work and you have attained your goal, there's a feeling of refreshing. You know, ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ay. You feel so refreshed. You don't need to drink coke. You, no, no, no. You, the vision refreshes you. The vision replenishes you. Let me show you something. You have that video for me? Play that video, please. Hello, my name is Jennifer Chikujakwe. I'm a wife, a mother, and interior designer. I joined Harvesters years ago, and from the very first day we stepped into Harvesters, it was the word for me. I have never heard the word being preached in such a practical way, considering the fact that I'm from a very um, orthodox religious background. I have never heard it preached so, in such an amazing way. It changes your mindset. It makes you know that 
with Christ you can do anything, okay? So it makes you know who you are in Christ. And that has pushed me to where I am today. With Harvesters, I was able to discover my passion for interior design while hosting cell at my house. Then I now became, I now decided to go into interior design and I have my own interior design business, um, Jenny's Design, and now founded the first interior design school in Nigeria that's been approved by an international body. And it's been amazing from one to the other. With that, we've been able to go into partnership with Lagos State Employment Trust Fund. We've gotten grants from international bodies like um, German Gears Project, United States of Africa and Development Fund to raise, to train people and to empower people. So the thing about Harvesters is it opens up your mind. It makes you see that if you can do, you can, you can do anything that you set your mind to. If what, someone had told me this years ago that I'll achieve all the things I've achieved now, I would not believe it. And guess what, we Harvesters, Everything is transformed from your life, your business, your marriage. My marriage is as perfect. It's, 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 it's beautiful now. We, it's, we're able to understand each other, we're able to communicate better and all that. So we have a stairs. It's the word. It's the word. It opens up your mind. So what I tell you guys is if you give have a just three months of a time, I promise you, your life can never be the same again. You will never hear the word being preached in such a a manner regardless of your background okay it opens up your mind and it changes your mindset so what i advise you is please give her some months of your time and see the transformation change if i can do it then you can thank you for harvesters for changing lives and keep changing more lives amen see when i see that i've gone on holiday because it's refreshing you must have things in your life that like cops and you get it, like you get that, it's a trophy, bam. It's a trophy. It keeps you going. It keeps you going. It keeps you going. You can't just be living for living's sake. There are parents that have children. What school is your child going to? The one next door. Aye! Abomination. Your children should go to schools that tally with your values. Not the one next door. Or else you raise an area boy since about neighborhood. Is it, and my child goes to the, um, the school in the area. So what does he become? An area boy. Yeah. Glory to God. Yeah. What does vision do? Vision makes life meaningful and what productive. So when people say, why do I feel unmotivated? Why do I feel life is boring? Why do I feel like going like holiday every single time? The reason why is that you don't have a compelling vision that makes life meaningful and productive for you. Without vision, it's hard to measure progress. Without vision, it's hard to measure progress. Without vision, life becomes boring. And some of our life is this. You are, you are pulled in two directions in life. You are either being pulled towards your past or being pulled towards your future. Can I have my, my past? Let me have my past. Let me have my past. In life, you are either being pulled towards your what? Your future or your past. This is my past. This, this picture was taken in my past. You know something about my past? There's nothing I can do about it. I can't change how I looked in my past. I can't change what I did in my past. I can't change how fat I was, how thin I was, what I can do. I can't do nothing about my past. What I can do is about my future. Unfortunately, most people, all they are doing is holding on to their past. Oh, I lost 20 million two years ago. I did a business, it failed. I broke my heart. I did this. I did that. I did that. Brother, leave your past and get your future, sir. Leave your past and go for your future. You lost the money in the past. You lost the business in the past. You did that in the past. What is the future? Don't become I was, I was, when I was, when I was, when I was, when I was. Become I am, I am. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to. Say my somebody. Paul said. This what Paul says it, forgetting the things that are behind, I press forward towards the mark of the high calling. You've hit the first 100 million, let's go for 300. You've hit the first 1 million, let's do the next 10 million. 
that's what makes life sweet. When life has no meaning to you, everybody goes to Canada. That's Canada. I go. Just look at the picture. That's a picture. You can change it. You can change it. I was. Some people, as soon as they marry, it's over. Because the, that's the vision. What they What's in life? You marry and have children. Ha. Ha. That's what you define as life. What does vision do for us? Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18. I said, how does God change us? Before you do that, let me just read one scripture to you first. First Corinthians 2 verse 9. How does God change us? How does, because some of you, God is putting vision in your heart. Look, look at the testimony of that sister we saw. Did, did you see that testimony? That, see, that is harvesters. It's a vision. We have a vision in our church to reach people that are far from Christ. That's why in our church sometimes, some people dress in ways that we're not proud of. They're like, why is that girl wearing? She's not going to a club. But it's a hospital. People are going to come in anyhow. We're not, we're not expecting perfect people. We're expecting sick people. So when you see people that are sick, ladies, I, I understand your brother, your husband has a bum bum problem. I understand that. But just tell your husband, just come early and sit on the first row. Praise God. You're safe. For, you just come and say, honey, we'll sit on the first row. That way we are safe. We don't see any bum bum anywhere. Praise God. If your friend says, I, I want a church that is accepting people, harvesters. Because our church is built for sinners. If you're looking for a perfect church, you need to leave this church. Because we're not perfect. But not just that. Our church is a place where sinners find Christ, salvation. But not only find Christ, they become disciples. That's why we tell you, go to the cell, go to the cell, go to the cell, go to the cell. Go. Why do you say go to the cell? Because we, I, we cannot disciple you by teaching. Discipleship is one on one. One on one. Someone must know you. Someone must teach you how to pray. How you Someone must call you. Are you in church on Sunday? Are you not coming to church on Sunday? That's why after this service, if you've not been to membership class, that's where you start from. You go to that room and say, I want to submit myself. Because you hear that testimony. For you become a member, we begin to train you for ministry. You know what she said? He said, from hosting a cell, I, I learned I could start a lot of things. I started the first interior design school. In Africa, in Nigeria. That lady said, going in international funding, government recognition, Lagos State contract, Lagos State sending things to her. That's the dream. See, that is the dream. Our church is not a business center. Our church is, our church is about changing people. When you come and go harvest this, it's about transformation, changing people. It's about reaching people that are far from Christ, building a spiritual family that love each other. It's not just about that. It's about raising disciples. That's why in our church, we want everyone must be willing to serve because I believe you're carrying a gift. It's my job as your coach to bring out your gift. I don't want to die with your gift. Either you're a married woman, you're a married man, I don't want to die with your gift. But you know what I love about our church? Why do you think our church is so emphatic on teaching that you understand? The reason why is this. For you to change people, they must understand. And for them to understand, you must break down the teaching. So I say, Pastor, you like props, a lot of attention. I say, I don't like illustration. I just do what is effective to help people. Don't, let me tell you something. I have the most difficult pastoral job in the world because every pastor prays and prepares to preach. I look for illustration materials. I think of the illustration materials, then I start looking for them. So we start looking for all of them and they go say, Where well, can you get this? Go this, go, go this, go this, go this, go this, go this. But the reason, the reason I'm not tired is because of you. Because I, that is just one testimony. I'm looking for 10 more. I'm looking for 15 more. I'm looking for so much more. Hallelujah. One of the senators that attended church told his wife, He said, Ah, he said, The way Pastor B knows Bible, eh? you think he wrote it. He said, Ah. You say, I've been going to church since. The, the way you explain the Bible, you think that when Paul was writing, he was there with Paul, they were discussing the Bible. But the reason why, it's not because, we, you know, it's because we, there's a goal. There is a goal. The goal is for you to understand and be transformed. The goal is not for you to come to church and be had a good time. And just say, um, I heard, but you know, you go to churches, you, don't, you heard, but you didn't really understand what they said. Oh, no, I want to break. How many of you, it was when you said coming here, you began to understand Bible. Wave your hands, let me see. Look at all the hands. 
That's what they stay online. Online, the same thing. Someone sent me a message and said, Pastor, whatever you need to do, come to Calabar. Whatever you need to do, come to Lori. Whatever. This is why we're starting churches in Abuja, in, you know, in, in Ajah, in, um, in, in the U.S., in the U.K. Because there are churches, but people need a church that will change their mind and change their life. But what keeps it going? That's what keeps it going. We were talking to the leaders. We said, our, our services are now full. We're thinking five services. Someone said, how will you cope? I said, it's not about me. It's about the people. That's why in our church, it's, it's quick to hear, I was almost divorced. I got repaired. Someone says, I actually go, do I read the Bible? And let me tell you something. All of you that have influence on social media, the good way you can steal what your influence is this. Whatever you learn in church, share it with your friends on social media. The reason why is this. There's a lot of bad narratives about God that's been popularized on social media. You have a platform. Share good news. Share the message. Let them understand it. Don't just like the video. Share the video. Thank you, my sister. She said she's doing it. Thank you. God bless you. Come and take a medal. Come and take a medal. Come, come take a medal. Come take a medal. She's doing it. Yeah, God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 9. Let's read it so we can close. Oh, glory. Are you getting blessed today? Yes, sir. Are you getting blessed today? Yes, sir. Have a strong vision for your life. As a lady, have a vision. The first Nigerian aeronautical engineer, woman. First female governor in, in Lagos State, woman. Ah, that's how they laugh until it happens. See, that's how they laugh until it's done. Never say it's impossible. Say, how can we do it? Are you hearing me? Let's go ahead. Are you there? Are you there? First Peter, First Corinthians, two verse nine. See how how does God change people by putting vision? Some of you, God is putting financial vision in your heart. God is putting business vision. God is putting architectural vision. God is putting so much vision. Let me tell you something. Mark my word. In the next twenty, in the next ten years, there'll be bigger banks than what you have today. UBA, all this will not be the biggest bank. There'll be new banks. I'm telling you now so that you can catch the vision. So that you know why? Because vision is a vehicle. If you let God use it, will use you. If you let God use you, you move to somebody else. First Corinthians chapter 2, see what the Bible says. As it is written, eyes have not seen, neither have ears heard, neither has he what? Entered into the heart of man. What, what? So how does God change you? He makes it enter into your heart. In your heart, you just feel, I can deal with the sewage problem. In your heart, I can deal with this local government issue. You just feel it deep in your heart. He says it will enter within your heart. He doesn't say enters your pocket. It enters your heart first. Once it enters your heart, it will enter the bank account. It enters your heart first. Once it enters your heart, don't kill it. What you need to do is to nurture it. Don't kill it. What you need to do is to nurture it. Here yeah, are churches creating hubs for people all over Nigeria. Just says, can a church do that? Watch us do it. We will start from one, then go to two, then go to three. Then one day you go to your village, you just say, have a sense of it. He, he will in there, we here. <laughs> and you can be either part of those that build in the hub or part of those that admire what is built. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Someone says, I'm tired of divorces. Maybe God is helping you to build married people. Because one of the ways you know your vision is this. What irritates you? What are you deeply concerned about? It can be an indication of your vision. Let me tell you what I don't like about church. I don't like church where people are strangers. That's why I stay outside. I don't know if you know any pastor that has the size of our church that stays outside every Sunday. There's hardly any pastor that has about 10,000 people on a Sunday that stays outside and greet people. The reason why is that I don't want you to be a number. I want to know, I want to know you as much as I can. And not just know you want to belong to a family because I know that the things you're going through until they all up close, you will never talk. You will never, never talk. You will never talk about your marital challenges. You will never talk. So I'm hoping I can pull you in. That's why after the service, we'll have the growth line. I can pull you in. One of our, one of our, one of our ushers, I don't know if she's around, she will have a store 
in Lagos Island and the stock got burnt. Uh, is she around? Come, just come, come, come quickly. I, I still got bonds. There's a single lady that's worked so hard in her business. I still got bonds. Bonds with millions of naira when that fire and VI happened. You know, remember the story, right? You know, and I didn't even know her. But because she was in the, she was in the small group, our HOD began to ask for prayers. And as we're praying, you know, come stand here, man. You know, as we're praying, you know, as we're praying, there were two of them, she and somebody else, they were in that incident. As we were praying, you know, what are we praying about exactly? This lady lost all her business capital. We're praying. Can't we be just be praying about that? And I said, I said, what can we do? I said, maybe 250 or 500,000. I'm not sure there were two of them. I think we gave her, was it 50 or 500? 250. We gave the other lady 500,000. I said, just go and rebuild a business. She told me, she's a single lady, how much your business worth now? She, she doesn't want to say that. And they only don't want to say that one is a lot of money. Yeah. When is small money, hey, Pastor? How much? <laughs> it's one fifty. You. you know, and you know what? You know, I'm proud about her. She doesn't have to sleep with any man to get any money. And and she's single. All of you blind guys are looking for someone to hear the voice of God. You can go back, Amen. But see, that's what keeps you going. Do you have some? So that, that lady is my cop. I may not be as rich as some of you have all these big houses and all of those kind of things, but I have cops. Hallelujah. I have trophies. Hallelujah. How does God expand you? He allows vision to enter your heart. The question today is this. I, I, I wish I can tell you three ways vision come, but you're coming on Wednesday, right? And Sunday, we're going to, Wednesday, Sunday, we're going to, this month is fire, sir. If you know anybody that is discouraged and is weak, you need to let them to come. You need to pull them and say, I found the place I'm going to take you to. What I want to do today is this. Begin to water your vision. Don't let the vision die. Don't let the vision die. Some of you have the vision of business, architecture, consulting, food, mall, building, entertainment, all of those things. You know one of the things I'm believing God for? For, what, for us to start a music and creative art studio where people that want entertainment will train them. You say Hollywood is full of, of gay. You don't fight them, you replace them. That's dominion. That's dominion. That's dominion. You start releasing your own. They say, where are they coming from? We, we incubate and release. We fund them. That's why some of you need, you need to put some mega, not that you give me 10,000. You see, the kind of money is not 10,000. This is mega box for mega funding. Because we have a mission. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When it's time for politics, they say they will do, they say they are bribing. We, we ourselves will bribe ourselves. Yes, Lord. Praise God. Hallelujah. Are you ready? Yes, Let's pray. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. My vision will not die. Breathe upon it for growth. Breathe upon it for manifestation. Everybody say, My vision will not die. Say, I will not give up on my vision. Breathe upon it for growth. Breathe upon it for my manifestation. Hallelujah. Let me hear you go ahead. Of- Let's go ahead and pray. Bible says, Paul planted Apollo waters, but God gives it increase. Yes, Tika Mashapala Matore Ile Kopasi Ataka. Membara Manikore Nimo Shabali Kumitsubredi Ata. My vision will not die. No way, no way, no way. No way. No way. My vision for business, my vision for ministry, my vision for that district, my vision for my team, it's not going to die. My vision for marriage, it's not going to die. My vision for my finances is not going to die. In Jesus' name we pray. There's a final prayer point. The Bible says that Ezekiel said the bones are dry. 
it said prophesy and the dry bones came alive every vision that is dry every vision that's lost steam every vision that's lost vigor let it come back alive every soul that is weak and depressed and discouraged let strength come to them declare in the name of the lord everybody say in the name of jesus let dry visions come back to life let dry souls come back to life lift up your voice like a trumpet let's go ahead and pray Go ahead and pray about your vision. Go ahead and pray about your vision. Lift up your voice. This vision will not die. This vision for a bank. This vision for real estate. This vision for consulting. This vision to run my company. This vision in my career. It will not die. Shalika Pana Tekeya. This vision for my family. This vision for my marriage. It will not die. Sama. 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 Bakora. Here's story the katata. In Jesus' name we pray. I prophesy over you, you will not get tired. Oh, that amen needs some help. I prophesy over you, you will not get tired. I prophesy over you, your deep shell will materialize. I prophesy your vision will materialize. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. This week receive help pass of vision. In the name of Jesus. Receive encouragement. In the name of Jesus. Thank you Father. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Please you can have your seats. Say with me my vision is finding expression. Glory to God.